there literally be streets of gold in heaven? Would there be streets of gold like uh, the Bible tries to tell us, literally? You know, heaven streets of gold are often ref referenced in song and poetry, but uh, harder to find in the Bible. In fact, there's only one passage of scripture that ref references uh, streets of gold and uh, <clears throat> that is in the holy city, the new Jerusalem. In uh, Revelation 21, verse 21, it talks about this. It says, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it was as it were transparent glass. Okay, so does this verse tell us that uh, there will be literally uh, streets of gold in heaven? And if so, what is the importance of the significance of the literal streets of gold? You see, uh, the Greek word translated gold is crucion. Crucion, which can mean uh, gold, ju gold jewelry, or overlay. So to translate it gold makes complete and perfect sense. In fact, struggles of interpretation often come up when people attempt to determine which parts of the Bible to take literally and which parts to take figuratively. A good rule of the thumb when studying the Bible is to take everything literally unless it doesn't make sense to do so. And in this chapter of Revelation, John isn't just throwing out some random descriptive terms. In the early parts of, uh, um, in the early parts of Revelation 21, he's, giving, he's given a road to measure out the city. Okay? He's given out a road to measure the city. Okay? Do you remember that? And all this kind of stuff. He's, he's uh, measuring, he's talking about the, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. And uh, verse 15, especially, let, let, let me just check, where is this verse where he's me measuring the city? You see, yes, verse 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Okay. So he specifically describes the wall of heaven as being composed of jasper and the city self of gold. Okay. The city, the new Jerusalem of gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also describes the foundations of the city walls being comprised of many specific uh, precious stones and jewels. You can go and check that on verse 19 and 20. So with these specifics in mind, the description of golden streets makes perfect sense in comparison to the rest of John's eyewitness description. Okay? So if heaven streets are made of gold, what's the point? What's the point? First, notice the condition of the gold when the gold is uncovered on the earth. It is not in the desirable condition that jewelers are looking for. The gold must be uh, smelted. It must be smelted in order for that uh, impurities float on top for, for removal, leaving only the pure gold behind. Okay? The gold that John saw in heaven was such of a quality that it appeared transparent in order to reflect the pure light of God's blazing glory. And God's ability to purify is not confined only to God. God has purified all who will enter his heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember what the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Just go and read there. Not only is God God's holy city one of the 
purity by his design, so are the citizens of that city. Okay? As we investigate this idea of uh, gold streets further, there are some teachers and scholars who do not hold the idea that heaven's golden streets are literal. Okay? There are people who don't think about them as literal. However, by looking simply at the text God has given us within the context of the entirety of John's revelation, there seems to be no reason to doubt it. However, our attention is eternity, is eternity, sorry. Our attention is in eternity and it will hardly be focused on earthly treasures such as um, things like gold or, or, uh, or silver and things like that. You see, man right now is focusing on gold and silver and, and precious stones and things like that and, and money and this kind of precious things. These are the things which uh, man will, is, is pushing on. But one day it will simply be no more than a source of pavement for the believer in heaven. Think about the, the if the streets are of gold, then the, it means is where we are walking on. It's, it's one of the least uh, things that people... It, it's like God is trying to show us what you value so much here on earth. In heaven it will just be, people will be walking, walking on top of it. It will be of... What we see so valuable here on earth, it's, it's, it makes no sense in heaven. It's just where people are walking. It's just the streets. So no matter how many precious jewels or materials make up the physical construction of heaven, nothing will ever be of greater value than the God who loves us and died for us. We may enjoy all this, we may enjoy, we may look at gold and say, wow, this is really beautiful. Uh, we look at it, so transparent, this gold has been smelted, it's so beautiful. Yes, it's been a lot of work taking it from the ground and uh, uh, all those kind of things. But remember, the most important thing is the Christ who died for us. He died for us and he gave us salvation. So that you can go and walk in the streets of gold. That you can go and see his wonderful creation. Think about that. So what is the gospel? The gospel, it's all about understanding why and how Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. For our sins. He didn't die for nothing. For our sins. And how did he die? By shedding his blood. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. Without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Why, sh why should blood be shed? Leviticus 17.11 It tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood of to make atonement for your sins, for your souls, sorry, upon the altar. So when you remove blood, then you mean something has died. And uh, why does that thing have to die? Why, why does that creation have to die? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Romans that the wages of sin is death. And that there is no one holy. No one is righteous. No, not one. So if we are all sinners, then someone has to die. But 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. All that you need to do is understand how and why Jesus died. And believe it in your heart and confess it out to Christ in a prayer. Tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You are buried and you rose again, as the Bible says. And once you confess that and you believe and you understand it, then my friends, you are saved. And all these streets of gold, you'll be passing by. And you'll be, be enjoying all these goodies that we, the Bible talks about. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please give it a, a thumbs up. And also you can uh, share the video for others to understand. 
and also you can subscribe to watch more videos. God bless you and have a great time.